For me personally, my passion with Porsche started as an inheritance gift from my father. I had a number of his picture books when I was growing up, and one of them was History of Porsche, written in the late, late 80s, early 90s. And that focused heavily on racing. And as a little child, that captured my imagination. You know, some of the, the later Group C cars, the 917s, 917.30s, these wild flame-spitting monsters. And that's what I, I thought they were all, you know, all the cars were about. Well, between the ages of 16 and 18, I got to learn to drive in the 2004 Boxster X. And it was just a go-kart, but bigger. This is exactly the same. This is phenomenal. These cars are amazing fun. And then I went to sit my driving test and do a few official lessons and I think it was some kind of Toyota. And I'm like, well, this, this isn't great. And it really reinforced this idea that Porsche is special. My name is Jordan Cameron Romelier and uh, we're sitting here at Modern Air called LLC. We're a Porsche specialist workshop in Houston, Texas, located right in the middle of everything. Man. We tend to build race cars and restore old Porsches and keep you know, new ones on the road and maintained and really try and make people happy. So Modern Air Cooled currently heading into 2018, we're a five person team. I'm almost the baby of the group, but not quite. I couple, one of my newer hires is a little bit younger and, and one of my best mechanics is, is a year younger than I am. And then I've got uh, Peter who's a few years older and Ian so who's a few years older. And what that means stepping in here as a client is after a number of email exchanges or a number of phone calls, you come in here and meet five fresh young faces. And we've had some interesting responses, everything from, are you the owner or the owner's son? You guys really know what you're doing? I chuckle and say, yeah, we think we do. And then to, there's no way, you know, what are you doing? And, and, and some people are blown away and some people are quite mistrusting and, and that speaks volumes on who they are and what kind of client they will be. But it's, it's all part of the fun in the game. The concept behind Modern Air Cool was really about me preferencing what speaks to me personally. What always captured my imagination were those early race cars and what was the closest tangential link to the race cars was the 993s. They were still hand built, still split case, still air cooled. They were wild, they were built by a small bespoke manufacturer and then Prior to opening the shop, father purchased a 993, a 96 Arena Red Metallic. And it really spoke volumes of my childhood memories and really captured my imagination again here in the States. Then I was going to technical college and he was sort of going, where, where are we going to take it to be worked on? Oh, okay, will you work on it in the garage on the weekends? And he's like, I'm like, of course I will. And we realized there weren't really any other people doing it anymore. There seems to be a broad generation gap between those who were working on 993s in the past in this town and those who were doing it now. And that's kind of where I went, hey, well, if this car speaks to me in such a way and it has this huge cult following and the prices are exploding, these late model vehicle cars, the 964s and the 993s, that's a really good basis to build a brand around. I'm currently perched upon the, the very naked front end of a really special race car that we, we genuinely love working on, despite it being wrapped in a friend of mine's company, Cutting Edge Colors. But this car of Michael's, it really, really symbolizes what I want to be doing. You know, it's a GT1 slash P-Class prototype race car. It looks like a 993 with a monster turbo 930 engine in it. And it shoots flame. <laughs> It's loud, it's got no windows, barely any doors, and I'm just very thankful that it's here today. This is the throne upon which I'm trying to continue to grow. Some of our biggest challenges and obstacles was initially understanding what we were getting into. I started this with a business partner in December 2015, and we really believed that we would be or could potentially grow into this small focused two or three man team in a smaller shop doing one bigger build at a time and just working through them. Quickly realized that wasn't the case. That was never going to be the case. Waiting on parts, finding, you know, we needed more space to, to sit things around, you know, the dreaded call to the dealership. Hey, I'm looking for so-and-so Walmart regulator. Oh, well, we have remanufactured ones available in Germany. It's eight weeks to get one. All of this found out that we needed to be at a certain volume and at a certain level to not only make sure that I can pay my employees well enough to live decently so they're happy and want to come to work here, 
but also the, I mean, that we could keep the work going and we could always be, be challenged and, and, and interested by new cars, not looking at the same ones every day. And then we also went, we're trying to do everything. We're going to need more hands. You know, we, we exploded. And, and the biggest challenge to date has been handling the growth. Fortunately, a growing company, it's really hard to keep organized. So at this stage, there's been a number of, you know, times we dropped the ball. And I've been going around apologizing to certain people. Some of those who understand it now are best friends and best clients. Uh, others have probably gotten away from us. And I, I really regret that. But it, it's been a huge learning experience, knowing how big we need to be and knowing how challenging it is getting there. I have some pretty wonderful dreams and visions for where the shop could go. So in short term, I, I want to fill in the blanks of our services. You know, we, we currently don't have an alignment rack. And that's something that I really want to do because we, we're doing a lot of race car modification. I'd love to be the one to be doing the corner balancing and the alignments. We, we currently don't have a lot of room for uh, dirty areas for restorations and fabrication work. I would love to work in the short term at filling in the gaps in our service, not necessarily to make more money, but to make sure that I can control every step of the process for the cars, and then we can be responsible for the finished product in its entirety. Then more esoterically, the world domination plan. I really see a huge gap in the market. In 20, 30 years, the guys that, that worked on air-cooled cars in the dealerships no one knew, they will all be gone. And unfortunately, while there are some absolutely stellar examples of shops around the country and the world that, that do have apprentice programs, substantially we don't see younger people taking up the slightly more artisan aspect of keeping the air-cooled cars, the race cars, and some of the unique portions on the road. What I think we're gonna need to work on doing is either expanding into other cities as places close down, keeping the market and the, and the cars alive, or depending on how car culture in general goes, we might find ourselves shrinking and becoming gallery curators for keeping the cars restored, fueled, warmed up and not leaking, and shipping them out to owners for private track days. It's gonna be really interesting to see how we grow into the next 50 years, because given the age of my workforce, that's a reality for us in a way that it isn't for a lot of other shops. I cannot appreciate enough everyone who gave me a go. And the main proponent of that has been the Porsche Club of America. Anyone who owns a Porsche vehicle should be a part of it. That's allowed me to go out and meet some of the best and most enthusiastic people that, that share my passion. And those were the people who really gave me a shot in the beginning and allowed me to establish myself. And those are the people I really want to thank. And my best advice for anyone who's going into a similar field is, do not overlook the enthusiast. Yeah, you're gonna get into arguments about oil grades. Yeah, you're gonna get into arguments about, about parts pricing and margins and some things like that. But they are also the people that will go into bat for you. You know, who, who will give you the best reviews, who will spread the word the most and will really be a resource. That's where the club's always become a fantastic resource. And I'm really thankful for the PCA especially. Really honest.